Welcome to another episode of Tandaza Mkeka um, and I'm Mothering the Woman podcast. Well, Swahili is rubbish. <laughs> Many people can attest to it. Mm. Um, what does Tandaza Mkeka? Mkeka. Tandaza Mkeka. What does that mean? The, the same way you will apologize yeah. for how I said your name. Yeah. It's the same way I'll apo- I, I will take your apology yeah, for me. saying Mkeka. Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> we we and I live in Lamu. Yeah, and you live in Lamu. It's a struggle. <laughs> it's fine. So Tandazam Keka is a very simple concept. Yeah. We are in, in the Swahili community, when you are going to sit somewhere to eat, yeah. you're told to either Tandaza mm. Ajamvi or Tandaza mm. Keka. I'm with you. So that you sit and gather community. to eat, yeah. to talk, to yeah. do whatever it is. Yeah. So basically, I am oh. asking you. To sit on my mat, love it. let's gather, let's have a conversation, love. and let's just have the best time. Yeah, Talking but, about things that people don't absolutely. normally talk about yeah. out loud. These things are relegated to our kitchen, yeah. Mm. Yeah. or to wine yeah. dates, yeah. or to sisterhood, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. now, we're sitting here, the three of us, having a conversation yeah. about what? About our sex. sex. Uh, that, ooh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Bring it. So, <laughs> let's, in fact, let me even push my hip <laughs> down. So, let's start. Uh, let's, here, and introduce yourself. Okay. Let's start with Maggie, then uh-huh. you go to Nemo. Right. And then we can, I can ask you my very Jump many questions in. about sex. <laughs> so, I'm Maggie Gito, and my official, very long title is I'm a marriage, family, and sex therapist. In this context, I'm also an opera singer, but I'm not here to sing. Um, <laughs> yeah, can you later? Yeah. Oh my God, God help us, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but I'm a marriage, family, and sex therapist, and I I live here, I work here. I'm really excited, actually, to be here. I'm excited for the conversation because I'm a big I, I am a big proponent, not a proponent. I believe very strongly that evil thrives in secret mm-hmm. and bad things thrive in secret. Mm-hmm. And conversely, growth, goodness, love, joy, connection, community mm-hmm. come from opening, opening, letting the light in. Mm-hmm. Let's just see what's there so we know what to do about it, if yeah. anything. Yeah. So thanks for inviting me. Oh, very <laughs> I'm very happy to have you. We were discussing how far we've come with yeah. our hair, so we will talk about that a bit later. Because <laughs> you know, sisterhood is important. Right, but yeah. yeah, let's put that in another <laughs> box. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I'm Nimo Gibaho. Um, I trained as a psychiatric nurse. My speciality is with kids. Um, but coming to Kenya and mental health with kids at the time I came was very... Um, I mean, we're already not discussing mental health for adults. Mm. So me coming and talking about, I work with kids between the ages of three and yeah. people are like, no. And how long, no, we don't. How long ago is this? Um, my goodness, it's going in October. It's going to be 12 years. I've been ah, back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so and I'm also a yoga teacher. It was very, yeah, it mm. was. Um, and I'm also a yoga teacher. Mm. Yes, in yes. Lamu. In Lamu, oh, but in, in, Lamu. in Nairobi as well. I oh. do yoga nidra classes. Oh, yeah? I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I have a podcast, oh. Different yes. Vibes with Nemo. Oh. Absolutely. Um, yeah. We'll and share the links with us and we'll I put them on the episode as well. Will. Mm. That's me in a nutshell. Mm. Beautiful ladies. Awesome conversation. I love awesome. the work that you've been doing, Maggie. Sex therapy, as in, I don't even think how... <clears throat> how intense therapy is, then you want me to go and talk about intimacy and sex on top of that. On top of that. And I'm thinking in my mind, uh, no, I'm not <laughs> going to go sit there and talk about my sex life, turn out with my husband there mm. or whatever it is, or partner, and they were just there talking about what you like. and what, that's, that's what I imagine mm-hmm. sex therapy to be, that you're sitting there, or another level of we are in bed together and you're showing us positions. Mm-hmm. I'm imagining that's what... This is, yeah, this is like a lot of what, people think I do that. The kinder like, ones. Yes, <laughs> like you're in boudoir and you're, you know, you're like, yeah, don't put your leg there, don't put your hand there, don't do that. That's what I imagine sex therapy to be. And I imagine other people think the same. They do. So this, let me just put a foundation as to what we want to talk about today. Yeah. So in Mothering the Woman, like I was telling you earlier, is basically a platform, a safe space for women who are mothers mm. or who may not be mothers or trying to be mothers or, you know, on the journey towards motherhood. Mm. It's basically a safe space to let them know that it's okay to say or want to reclaim your womanhood back. Mm. 
you know, unmother yourself from things that either patriarchy or the society or government has told you you have no choice to do. Mm. So a lot of these women are in their own cocoons of feeling. If you're a first-time mom, you don't know how to navigate this journey. Mm -hmm. If you're a fifth-time mom, there are things that happen in your body that you still don't understand today. You might be having your fifth child and going through menopause. Bro, that is not even, you know. Mm -hmm. Or you might be 25 and have five kids. You, you know, there's so many things that women navigate mm. towards that our mothering is providing a safe space for. Mm. So one of the things that has always been on my mind has been sex, intimacy, mm -hmm. sexual pleasure mm -hmm. after giving birth. Mm -hmm. What does that look like in terms of, so you're there. I'll give you my own experience. You're there. You've just had a baby. You're being told many things about breastfeeding. Maybe your milk has not come in. Maybe, you know, and then when you come back home, there's also other children. After six weeks, your husband is there. Dr. Ria Mesema. Dr. Ria, I was about to say Dr. Ria Mesema. Six weeks. What is that? What does that look like for a woman? And how do they navigate through those things? And then there's also that other added aspect. Your period checks in. Pop, six weeks. Six weeks. Mm. So I think I, it was you that I was telling that during that period, <laughs> I hated the way I smelled. Mm -hmm. My Ooh. breast milk used to make me feel icky. Mm. I used to feel so smelly. It can smell like smelly. cheese. Yes. Mm. It smells like you yeah. work out the smelliest cheese. So you're trying cheddar. to be intimate mm -hmm. with your child Ooh. or whatever that looks like. Ooh. And then this other thing is trying to happen and you're like, no. So I want us to discuss, to put that into, con into context, mm -hmm. like what does sexual intimacy look like postpartum? And you can share your experience, mm -hmm. Nemo, as a, as a mom yourself. Yeah. yeah. So for me, I had a um, C-section, um, elective <laughs> C-section. And um, oh. I, I guess I was fortunate enough that the father of the child was back in Nairobi, so I didn't have to navigate that absolutely uh, i didn't have to six weeks <laughs> over yeah. <laughs> time was up i didn't have to navigate that um so that but at the time i, I think if anyone had asked me to have sex i'd have shot them mm -hmm. to be honest mm -hmm. because i felt fat i felt t i was tired. tired i was absolutely because my daughter was like clockwork every two hours she'd mm -hmm. be awake to breastfeed and at breastfeed, she'd sleep. Me, I'm left kind of, and as I'm about to sleep, she wakes yes, up exactly. again. Mm -hmm. So I was tired, I was confused. I was, sex was the last thing mm -hmm. on my mind. Then the other thing was, I was so pissed off that my parents came back because I'd loved not <laughs> having my parents. In fact, I'm very happy I'm, I'm, I'm premenopausal because yeah. I've stopped. Yeah. So I'm, I'm such an excited person. <laughs> But they came back, that made me feel again. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I, I think if anyone had asked for sex, it, it wouldn't have happened. Mm. Mm. Any type of sex, would, whether it's I'm giving you oral, oral. Mm. or it would not <laughs> suck my nipples, mm. no. <laughs> don't even <laughs> look at me. Just, just look at the child. About your gaze. <laughs> About your gaze. Absolutely, <laughs> completely. But then when I came back, so I flew back to Kenya and my daughter was... Um, eight weeks old, mm. and I was horny as mm. hell. <laughs> I think heaven scared him. <laughs> That's why we You're just jumping, <laughs> just jumping in the boat. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> <this. laughs> Who are you? The kids are asleep. <laughs> Who uh -huh. are you? Knocking on the door. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> kids are asleep. <laughs> but yeah, so it was two very different, um, and, and I think, uh, but also I, was, I had my daughter later, I was 37 when I had her. Mm. So I think I was past, I was getting to the point where you don't really care what, do you know what I mean? Mm. What you look like, yeah. for lack of a better word. So um, it was great to get back into the, the sack. Mm. Mm. Uh, and you felt, how did you feel? Like So the feeling of um, horniness yes. came after how long? Like, when, when did you feel like um, put you this discovered way. yourself? We, we landed, mm. and that night, I was it was on. I was winking at a nigga. <laughs> eight oh, wow. weeks. So this was eight weeks. 
And and obviously it wasn't as regular as before mm. we had um our daughter, but it it, it was hey so what do you think that is like so both dynamics as a sex therapist mm-hmm. and, and and this is now me knowing more about sex therapy than just <laughs> in the boudoir <laughs> <laughs> so <I'm> as if, <laughs> I, I know i know more maggie i did my research i don't think i don't <laughs> I don't think you're the guy for put your leg here. <laughs> it's it's more guys. I, I know more. Yeah. Um so what 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 do you think that is? Like what what is that disconnect between how you feel immediately postpartum mm-hmm. and then because I know a lot of women are not like anymore. Mm-hmm. Eight weeks, a year can go by. Mm-hmm. You know, feeling the way you're feeling. Um and it's like you've completely disconnected from having two things sexual um you know sex mm-hmm. and intimacy mm-hmm. those two things can be separated and can also be correlated yeah. so what does that look like why do some people feel like you know so quickly six six weeks eight weeks happens mm-hmm. and the other ones that go even for a year without feeling you know is it that you don't feel like it's your body or what what is it you know the process of even conceiving as soon as you find out you're pregnant something does shift it shifts internally physically psychologically you find you're more careful you dress differently because everything is very baby focused mm. right i want to be healthy i want the child to be healthy the prenatal and people also treat your body like just a thing mm. right the, so they don't say oh can i check your breasts for lumps or mm. can i examine you to see how the you know the baby is or they just do it mm. even up to the point of delivery oh let's just check how many centimeters you're dilated but what they mean is let me stick my fingers in your vagina mm. yeah no no conversation consent. no question consent. so for like n- yeah consent, There's no consent. <laughs> <laughs> but like if you came here and you're pregnant you you, you have given us consent yeah. to just yeah. shove our yeah. fingers and that's what it feels like it feels like and and it's not always the same person mm. right mm. it could be the nurse who's on duty at that time mm. but who wasn't on duty the hour mm. before or will not be on duty the hour after so it's just someone showing up and saying let me you know I'm wondering if you're going to be available for our birth trauma <laughs> episode because that's literally one of the conversations yeah. we are going to have I mean, respect, respecting, you know, respectable maternity is something yes. that we also don't talk about. But, yeah. but we will, we will later. I was just going to add, mm. my experience was very different because in the UK, you, you find out you're pregnant and you're assigned a midwife. Mm-hmm. And she's with you, or he, she's with you, most of them, with, from the time mm. she's, um, mm. you're, you're given your name your midwife. Yeah. Mm-hmm until three months after you've had the child. Mm. So even catching things like postpartum depression, mm. because now they've known you for how long? I so they can that. see the shift in mood, they can see, and the mm-hmm. consent, like I said, I trained as a nurse, you can be, um, you can be charged for assault if you do not ask mm-hmm. for permission, even to take a, a temperature, yeah. or even the pulse. Mm. You have to seek consent. And it's one-one. Class one yeah, one, yeah. So you know, kind of that that finger shoving and sidrinini. Uh, they will tell you exactly what they're doing. Is it okay? Fine. Explain. I'm just gonna warm my hands. Yeah. Or you're gonna oh my feel God. cold. Or you're gonna. So at every step of the way, you know what's happening. When I came to Kenya and heard that, I was like, "What the? Mm. Yeah, mm. we are traumatized. Mm. We we also we are understaffed. Yeah. We are underpaid yeah. Yeah. systemically, yeah. No, even beyond the individual mm. level." Mm. We are so overwhelmed, work-wise, the fact that we live in a country that doesn't have good yeah. working systems. Mm. Because when I've had gynas from outside the country, mm. they say, okay, Maggie, can you scoot forward? Yeah. And then, you know, you yeah. scoot and say, oh, scoot again. Yeah. And now put your foot here yeah. and here. Okay. You're going to feel my hand yeah. on your left thigh. Yeah, it, it's going to be cold or it's yeah. just my hand or oh, I've put loop. So literally I mean, how pediatricians treat children. Yeah, they, they really, yeah, and, and they really, do actually explain <clears throat> everything. Even after they say, I'm inserting yeah. my fingers, mm. for you, you'd think, okay, you they're blood. probably checking something. Mm. They actually tell mm. you. 
I'm just pressing to feel for any cysts. Yeah. I'm mm. just pressing to feel if the baby this. But that's the aspirational care. Mm. Mm. The care we have yeah. is by humans who are exhausted, underpaid, underappreciated, yep. etc. Yep. So I was just saying that when the minute a woman says I'm pregnant mm. or a doctor says mm. to a woman you're pregnant, mm. they cease to exist as a human being and it becomes baby, yeah. everything baby. Yeah. Take these vitamins for baby. Yeah. Um, your family, whether they're supportive or not, it's around the baby. baby. Right? And without recognizing it, you, your humanity itself begins to disappear. Mm. Because even you get in on baby, 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 mm. right? And then six weeks after delivery, you're supposed, supposed to, to be back to what? Mm. Hack in the call yeah. of sex. You, mm. you've, what is sex? Mm. You've forgotten it. And then also when you treat it just like a, like a body, mm. You kind of forget yourself that you are a, like you're a human yeah. being. Yeah. You're not just a stork mm. to carry a, a baby <laughs> yeah. and deliver, right? Yeah. Like you're a whole life. Yeah. And then also we because we live in a capitalistic system mm. globally, mm. it generally in Kenya as well, mm. it means that the societal systems that were typically in place mm. to care for the woman, to care for the mother. Mm. They're not there. They're not there anymore. So it's your husband sometimes who has to wash your bloody underwear. Mm. How sexy you are. Mm. It's your partner sometimes who's absent. Mm. Doesn't want the pregnancy. Yeah. Or got sent off to out the country for work. Or doesn't get paternity yeah. leave. Yeah. Right? So he comes and he's exhausted and you've been listening to a crying baby all the time. Yeah. How sexy is that? Yeah. And then as a woman especially if you're breastfeeding, but also in general, because you're attached to the child mm. usually, and even if you're not, the child is attached to you. Mm. So even if you have postpartum, the child still craves wants, you, yeah. wants you. Yeah. There's a lot of touching mm. that feels almost parasitic, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm only here to put boobs in this one's mouth. Mm. Anyone? You know, they're so little. It's not like you're chit-chatting like yeah. now. You yeah. can have tea and chit-chat. Yeah. And so it's hard to make the agree. connection, yeah. right? It's hard to make the connection between, let me wear a lippy, yeah. let me... Six weeks later. <laughs> Six weeks later. In your lingerie. Even, even just, even if it was in childbirth, even yeah. just any surgery yeah. Yeah. on your abdomen. Yeah. Yeah. Six weeks later. So that actually the six, that's that's interesting because mm. six weeks is what you're told um call it vaginal birth mm. is supposed to be mm. for CS yes. is longer no, right same thing it's six weeks six weeks it's six told, weeks yeah it's all six weeks but it's including it's major driving, surgery including it is but so for example in English <laughs> it's not major surgery it's not considered major surgery you know like here where they literally people have, literally remove things they from do, your stomach and then do. put it back but yeah. immediately after the but in fact after I breastfed her mm. I was told now Start walking. you need to make your way to the to the, the bathroom. bathroom and take your first poo and take whatever you're going to do whatever you're going to do, do. Go <laughs> that's, the bathroom. Bathroom. that's up to you and I'll tell you I you know how you you dance like this. Mm. I didn't walk. I swam mm -hmm. <laughs> to the bathroom. and But it is six weeks. Even with the insurance, you're told you can't drive for that six weeks. You can't live in it. Mad so, it's but insane. here's the thing. I was, I mean, apart from now that, you know, the I mean, inside, yeah. it wasn't, it, it I, I, I can't say I've, I've experienced it, but I'd say the people who've had the, when, you know, when you're cut, mm. Mm. I think they suffer more. They do. I think they suffer more. So it, it's, I, it's and, different because I've yeah. had two vaginal births yeah. in the first time. And I think this is also one of the things that we will probably discuss mm. because it's the thing about res respecting maternity mm. or you know, respectable yeah. maternity. They don't ask you if you want to be cut or like, do you want to be stitched? Mm. They, don't, they don't ask you. A hundred percent of the time. But just... Yeah, something happens, you tear yeah. somehow, somewhere. Yeah. I, I had two babies who are not that yeah. big. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you tear yeah. and they show now you with or without your consent, yeah. you know, like sometimes you're loopy or you're tired or you're sick or you're, mm. or you're bleeding out or whatever is going to happen. Mm. You should at least tell me what is it's going on down there, do you know? Uh, so yes, yeah, I just most of the time, because... you know, it doesn't happen. So they just sew you? Yeah, 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 you have to be stitched. And so, But no, no have... conversation about what's happening down there? 
most of the time no remember i was a first time mm. mom mm. things were happening to my body mm. child has popped out you've you've torn from here to your mm. whatever and they stitch you up mm. and then you they send you home and they tell you make sure you sit on a sits bath for mm. for god knows how long mm-hmm. until you you heal mm. so that first time yeah. when you wake up to go to the toilet yes. that first poop painful. is going to kill you yeah. because But, You're it's bloody. Enough. It's very tra- it's traumatic. Honestly, you're bloody, you're poopy, you're you know, everything is not okay. I knew that they stitch you. I knew they cut you because apparently you don't you have to tear be cut on yourself. I what 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 I haven't had a, 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 mm. a biological child. But what I had heard was yeah. that if you tear if they let you rip yourself, it's harder for you to heal. So it's easier for them to cut you. so that they can stitch you at a proper length. No. But I had no idea that they don't explain to you. I mean, uh, in 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 while you were giving birth, we did, we ended up having to do this. So when you go home, I'm horrified. And by the way, the first poop needs to be <laughs> on your cuz I've had several abdominal yeah. surgery. Yeah. Anybody who tells me, "Oh, I'm having surgery," even if I don't know you, yeah. I will give you the poop discussion. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm the poop expert. <laughs> Because if there are the prayers the Lord has had <laughs> yes. over the years, <laughs> so it is I love you is. forever. If you just please let me poop in peace. When we're talking about the kind of pre- mental preparation that you should have, mm. and I said that we're going to discuss that in an actual different episode called mm. birth trauma, and I'll tell you why. Um, I feel like we also need to talk about how traumatic birth is before we even start talking about postpartum. Yeah. So, when I had my second child as opposed to my first one, I both carried my children fairly okay. Mm. My I had hyper driver mimesis that one for vomiting throughout mm. the, oh, during my no. first. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah, during my first I was very young, was a first time mom, newly married. I had so many challenges. Yeah, my life was just but the child herself was fine yeah. and growing and yeah, happy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was right. stick thin. Yeah. I was it was a very challenging time for me, but mm. the pregnancy was fine. So I I I did a normal birth delivery it was fine. Mm. The experience in the hospital was also very awesome. Mm. It was mm. I went to Nairobi Hospital, shout out Nairobi Hospital. Mm. It, they were, they know how to treat a new mom. Mm-hmm. And they you know there was like it, it's like old school mm. maternity, mm. you know. I was my mom had me in Nairobi Hospital. Mm. So mm. I mean like it was they've done this mm. for a really long time. Mm. So the second time along I had more knowledge in my brain. I didn't have and this is the thing that we talk about in terms of how things change when you're older versus younger. Mm. So less money, less less knowledge, mm. more money, more knowledge. Mm. So you have choice in your bag. You have things that you know that shouldn't be done. Mm. And I was also doing sexual reproductive health where I was working. Mm. So I was noticing things. I was like you shouldn't talk to me like that. Yeah. So the experience for me was very different. I had my second child. The nurse would come and ask, "Uko eh, sawa?" Huh? I had my vag- I, it was it was a normal delivery. Yeah, yeah. Next to me was a lady who had given birth via cesarean mm-hmm. and she was in so much pain. Me had, I came in at 8, I had my baby at 10. I was in the <laughs> labor ward uh, that delivery yeah. ward at at 11 mm-hmm. drinking my tea. So God's favorite. I was you you are uko <laughs> Hebrew birth, I don't know what it's called, <laughs> whatever it is. But I was there. But the lady was in so much pain and I could hear her struggling. Mm. You know, you we were sharing a room, mm. you know those duplex rooms. Mm. I won't say which hospital, but yeah, it was not Nairobi. <laughs> 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 but why not? Aga Khan. Yeah. So anyway, will they sue me? I don't know. I can remove that. I can blur that out. <laughs> no, but if it's true. Mm. I did. I did yeah. do my yeah, so they gave us a duplex room. The lady who was sitting next next door, she was in so much pain and i could hear her mm. and i could hear every minute like every other hour she would press the button people would come in mm. and she would explain i can't move i can't do this and the the people who would come to talk to her would just be like just try yeah just stand up you need to walk mm. and that that really stayed with me mm. that really really stayed with me and, and it's not that i'm saying that they treated her badly mm. or whatever it's just that whatever she was going through mm. her body was telling her was betraying her mm. was was telling her you can't do this yeah. and i feel like she needed more empathy mm. she yeah she absolutely did yeah. i mean 
I've had gynecological surgery, right? So it's it's the like C-section mm-hmm. cut minus mm-hmm. the baby mm-hmm. and several. Yeah. And I remember telling the last surgeon I had, I'd like you to give me 24 hours on catheter. Mm-hmm. And he said, what? I said, if I, I cannot handle waking up from surgery and then being forced to go to the to toilet. The yeah. You're so loopy. Mm-hmm. And also it hurts. I don't know what you think surgery feels mm-hmm. like, but multiply it by like a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Because remember, there are many layers to yeah, your, to your to body, muscle, your muscle, then, yeah. your skin. And then in my case, they're cutting you inside in different mm-hmm. places, right? Mm-hmm. And you know what? The surgeon said, okay. So the first 24 hours, because they also needed, my kidneys also had an issue. Mm-hmm. So they needed to check my urine yeah. output. Mm-hmm. I have a picture of me with a urine bag inside a bucket, yeah. inside a basin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. As I'm dragging myself to the Mm -hmm. toilet with Mm -hmm. that, you know, the kahanj we all know where you're shuffling your feet, everything hurts. Mm -hmm. But at least I knew enough to tell the surgeon, Mm -hmm. give me a catheter for 24 hours. Because in in theater, I have it anyway. I'm not asking you to not let me walk ever. Mm -hmm. That's but let me sleep. Yeah. Let me, and, you, in, and it turned out to be a good idea because I had a major crisis in surgery. Yeah. So I came out rather than an hour later, yeah. I came out like six hours later. Ah, I had lost, I, I don't know if, how many, like four or five of pints blood. of blood. So yeah. I had needed transfusion. Yeah. I needed four days of transfusion as and well, plus traumatic. in. So it was a physically a traumatic yeah. birth. But a lot of doctors don't tell themselves. Mm. Or the six Ooh. weeks. Ooh. Six weeks is maybe for somebody who's had one surgery yeah. or one Ooh. baby, yeah. right? Yeah. But how you process your body, how you process even anesthesia, mm. your liver, yeah. the first time is very different from how it processes it in yeah. subsequent yeah. times. So whether it's for dental yeah. or for, I mean, I've had dental surgery where the dentist said, I needed to use three and a half times the amount of anesthesia the amount of numbing mm. for your tooth mm. because you have a history where you've had many surgeries. So your liver sees anesthesia and just licks yeah. it. It's yeah. like, yeah. this is not a big deal. Yeah. We've done this yeah. before. Yeah. If that dentist hadn't told me that, I wouldn't have known enough to tell the next surgeon for my leg yeah. that, this you know what, this happening. is the history. And yeah. so I need you to watch me, yeah. right? And this is someone who isn't having a baby. Yeah. When you're having a baby... Remember, everybody has put you to the side mm. because baby is priority. Yeah. Even prayers, they're not really for you. They're only for you to have a safe delivery. They're yeah. not like for you, the human being. Whereas if surgery for me, it's about my well-being. Yeah. Yeah. When you're having a baby, even the prayers are about safe delivery. Mm. Help the surgeons have a safe delivery for her. So this is not about the woman, is what we're saying. Yes. Like mostly yes. postpartum is... And and I and I and I want to I want to see if I can challenge that a bit because in traditional African society, well, let me talk about the communities that we have. Mm-hmm. My community values postpartum because yes. they give you forty days yes. to be with your child. Mm-hmm. Um, forty days where you're not supposed to, you know, do anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the Arabian as we call it, it's supposed mm-hmm. to be for you and the child and the family to love on you and to take care of yeah. you, basically. Yeah. So if you are living in, not in a capitalistic mm. society and you're living at home in shags or whatever, mm, yeah. you'd have many, many women yeah. coming to care for you and look after you and mm. rub your feet and yes. rub your belly and funga your and stomach, funga your stomach yes. and things like that. And take yeah. the baby. And take also. the baby and let you sleep and let you for sleep. those 40 days. And then you're not, you know, you come out of 40 days and you're, you know, I don't know how, space. I don't know how rest, rested mm. you would be, <laughs> yeah. but I'm assuming that you'd be, you'd have help. Mm. So, I want to go back to the conversation around it's not about, you know, the the woman, it's about the baby. Yes. And I want to go back to that conversation where we both had about mm. feeling overtouched. Yes. Mm. So what does that look like? Tell me more about that because I, I, I want to understand yeah. what that is. The biggest thing is the absence of consent because you're essentially told directly and indirectly that this is what we're going to do. And a lot of healthcare providers, unfortunately, because of exhaustion or whatever, Mm -hmm. they just don't view empathy for the woman as a critical part of the care, Mm -hmm. right? And so when people are touching you without consent, you almost feel like the minute your partner, male or female, Mm -hmm. because some people are, you know, lesbian couples who've Mm -hmm. had a baby and Mm -hmm. they want to have sex, Mm -hmm. 
but you feel as if, can people please stop touching me? Mm. Because sex is also stated societally mm. as a right. Mm. Even in a patriarchal society, if you tell the elders, I want to leave him because he doesn't he doesn't have sex with me. Yeah. There's no discussion. He's on yeah. the wrong. They yeah. don't even defend him. Yeah. They tell him this is wrong. She has sex the right to have sex. Mm. She has the right to etc. Right. Mm. So sex is like hakiamto. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's your right. Yeah. And now here you are. You know you're saying six weeks postpartum. Mm. It's only six weeks of not being pregnant. Postpartum makes it sound very fancy. Mm. All it means it's six weeks of. The, the thing that everyone focused on yeah. being inside you yeah. to being outside of yeah. you, you're still a secondary thought. Exactly. Because, and, and we, we had structures in place as Africans, mm. and we still do, mm. thankfully, to a certain extent. To a certain extent. But capitalism and westernization, mm. individualistic um, perspectives mm. um, have fractured that, have yeah. fractured that to the point that it isn't our pleasure anymore to care for a, a new mom. Mm. It's an obligation. Oh my God. I mean, I had a baby. I need to run for a baby shower before I go for coffee with you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like a a by the way. Yeah. So So if you're disconnected, you're not going to want to get touched. Exactly. But also, I want to hear your perspective Mm. because being overtouched also means being overtouched by baby. Mm -hmm. Now, I was thinking about that when you're talking. Mine came much later where I'd said, I'm going to breastfeed till she's two years old. <laughs> you know, the whole... Uh, breast, this, is best. breast is best. Breast is best. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, and also, I think I also had, like I'd, I'd said to you, my parents separated when I was quite young mm. and my father was a pr- primary carer. And one of my biggest fears was, what if I'm, I'm like my like mom who mom. didn't want to have yeah. children and I don't connect with this being. Mm. And so anytime I had that thought of, what the hell am I doing? Why did I have a baby? Mm. I think, shit, I'm becoming my mom or, I'm, or I, I, I don't want the baby. Or mm. I don't. But I think for me, the, the breastfeeding, it came to a point because I think also we're co-sharing the bed. Mm. And so for her, the boob was just there even at <laughs> night. Do you know what I mean? And it became a habit. She'd turn and just it's like delivering. And not sucking. Just, mm. just put it In the just place. Yeah. 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 And that wakes me up. And this is, so I think I started resenting the fact that I had to breastfeed. Mm. I had to move her out of the room because it was getting to a point where it was starting to become resentment yeah. of That's I want the boob or I want mm. or even the idea of her looking at my tits. I'm like, oh, I hell no. A virtual gaze. I do, move, a virtual gaze. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to look at Interesting. And, and, and yeah, and, and so, you know, of course, we didn't do the two years. I think I got to a year and six months or something, and that was that. But that for me was, it was a struggle because yeah. also then, you know, the stuff we're told as mothers, when we're not unmothering, mm. when we're being told you have to be like this, mm-hmm. you have to be caring yeah. as a mother, you're this, and yeah. the thought that I'm not going to breastfeed this child until was me starting to think I'm a bad mother. Mm -hmm. And the minute those negative thoughts Mm -hmm. start coming, it can be downhill because every little thing you'll criticize. If the child says, I don't want to eat, or if the child doesn't want to feed, maybe maybe I didn't feed, right, or maybe I'm not giving the right, or I'm a bad mother, I don't know how to feed. And here's the thing, Mm -hmm. a lot of kids, uh, kids are just little demons and so you'll see a kid agreeing to be fed by someone else exactly. and they'll eat so or the, the <laughs> or nanny comes and tells you yeah, yeah. Tells you, yeah bizuri, son. and you're like what <laughs> you mean <laughs> I'm Nikula so then you start thinking hey, yeah, there's something really wrong with, with me yeah. as a woman yes. and as a man not even mm. as a man now you, now you yeah. can't even as yeah. a woman <laughs> um, and there's something mm. terribly wrong I was very lucky to have an amazing support mm. um System. group system yeah. um and the, the the number of them are going to be your guests mm. um in you know and let, you know one of the things uh of we are going to have later said to me was a child won't starve if there's food in the house mm. mm-hmm. and for me that was so powerful because in my mind you have to eat breakfast, mm-hmm. then you have to have Lunch. tea, and mm-hmm. then you have to have, and when you think about it, even as an adult, we get full and we skip. Yeah, I mean, and we don't die. Yeah. No, do you know what I mean? Mm. And that was such a game changer for me, because 
then I realized, hey, I don't have to breastfeed till mm. two. Mm. <laughs> I can stop. Fed is best. Know those I can give you are, this child food. Your food. auntie comes and says, yes. so, but here formula. Right. Right. <laughs> right. right. And, and, and <laughs> she refused formula. Yeah. She absolutely refused formula. She wanted breast and from breast she went to food. Mm. Do you know oh. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She went to mushy. Food, the soft food and, and that food, mm. and then I put six. So I've got a picture of her with like a chicken wing. Mm. <laughs> I think she was six months. I said that's my yeah. she was in soap yeah. in the hospital. Well, 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 that's my child. Like, right there, <laughs> I'm holding a chicken wing. and sucking on that thing. Yeah. But it really, um, again, the touch because also, like you said, the breastfeeding. The child is mm-hmm. here. You're looking in the child's eyes. So even that was like, I'm, I'm not wanting to breastfeed. Is it because yeah. I don't want to be touched? Yeah. So, but I honored. Of, it, I mean, yeah. it makes sense because yeah. even as I was doing like my own reading around mm. this, um, obviously you get very heavily influenced me. TikTok, yeah. the TikTok <laughs> therapists, yeah, and the doctors. <laughs> oh my God, tread lightly <laughs> on the TikTok credentials. Me, I will heavily yeah. say that. I will say that very proudly. The TikTok yeah. therapist I was listening to last week they said, "Let's try again." Doctor, we know our TikTok. Yeah, we know our TikTok. <laughs> Alice Emma, I found it very interesting. So two things. Uh, just the other day, I saw a video where a lady was saying, "Did you know Ooh. your postpartum period ends at seven years?" At seven years. Seven years. So when the so child is seven. When the child is seven, <laughs> okay. you would say you're not in postpartum yeah. anymore. Yeah. And I was like, hey, what? so Mimi, but don't go postpartum. But don't go My second, second is four. Hey, hey, so you just, yeah, 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 just yeah, passed yeah. the other one for 14 and this one for seven. Yeah. And then the second thing is the other TikTok therapist yeah. doctor said, um, please quote me on this <laughs> proudly. <Yeah. laughs> Um, it was interesting because I was reading some articles, like actual research articles, mm-hmm. um, and <laughs> and then also listening to some other. Because once you get into that deep dark hole, you will hear a mm-hmm. bunch of things, and a lot of people saying, you know, yeah. you should be doing this, yeah. you should be doing that. Yeah. But one of the things that this lady said was that she has never looked at her breasts Ooh. as sexual things yeah, the lunch boxes yes <laughs> to her they've just gone out of fashion yeah, yeah. like nikama we can do everything else yeah. but yeah this means here, nothing this, this means yeah. nothing like yeah. the um, yeah. the touching Sad. and the whatever so it yeah. it occurred to me and i was like what what's that about yeah. like what 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 yeah. are we doing yeah why are we doing where are we this? like this as women yeah. because once you start viewing yourself Ooh. as lunch boxes mm-hmm. like you said mm-hmm. Or you feel overtouched, the yeah. intimacy goes away. The, mm. Yeah. So what? So what are the some of the strategies or the things that we can say to bring back positive sexual? Yeah. Uh, se- to bring the sexy back. Sexy. Mm. To bring the sexual positive. So this is one of them. Mm. Having sexual positive conversations mm. mm-hmm. or sexual health related postpartum mm. conversations. Mm-hmm. But what else is there that we can do? Mm. To bring the sexy back, I don't know. Who who do you want to ask? Yeah. Nemo, we'll yeah. start with Nemo. I think the the tuning. I don't know if children of today are using the word tuning. Oh, tuning. Oh, oh, tuning. Oh, sorry. tuning. I, I'm sorry. You use our box. I didn't even know. Oh, tuning. <laughs> Just signal that how you know. So I'm not. Let's just go to NSSF and line now. This is type for after me. I didn't even realize the tune. Tuning. I mean, listen, but I'm going to the 50 next year. We used to we used Thinking to be oh, yeah. Girl, I was thinking what? technology. I, I, was like, I was like the tune of the machine internally need to be tuned. Oh, you're yeah. being chatted up, didn't it? Where? So, <laughs> please okay. continue. So that has to come in. There has to be, say, for example, a date night mm. where you you you. With yourself Reclaim. or with your partner? Both. Mm. It can be both. Self-care. Self-care is such an important. Get your nails done. Get mm. your hair did. Get, read a book. Do something. Whatever. But self-care. To remember who you are. Because mm. again, like we're saying, Mama Nani. Mm. No, I'm Nemo. Mm. I was Nemo before. Mm-hmm. I'm still Nemo. Mm. I haven't changed. I have a daughter who also is her. In, she's her an individual. Person. She's her own person, mm. and that's the thing we need to remember. Uh, I said to you earlier that our children are a consequence of our choice. Mm-hmm. 
they owe us nothing. Mm. They don't owe us anything. But also, I need to be able to, to remember who I am. And I'll be different. Absolutely, I'm different. Like you said, the minute you find out you're pregnant, you, you change as a person. Mm. But I'm still Nemo. I'm a mature Nemo. Mm. But the only way to do that was is the self-care. Yeah. Is there still um, that alone time mm. with your partner? Mm. And I know that was where for me it was very difficult leaving my daughter with someone mm-hmm. So you can go have a long time with someone else. Some, it was You're a bad so parent. I, correct. Hey. Because again, she didn't do that. She was a child. Your child, your child is crazy. You can have sex with you. Your child is like, cause <laughs> for a shag. <laughs> You're a bad parent. You can have sex with your child. This is how you end up in this situation. But absolutely, you have to make time. You have to have to make time. Because apart from that, I think it will also make you a better parent. Because there's a conversation of, okay, so we are here now. What do we want? Because we assume that when we have the baby, we'll all know our lives are so different. Yeah. The dude has moved from being number one to being a second. Yeah. They're feeling somewhere about not having sex. You're feeling somewhere about having to have sex mm. or having to give. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So mm. it's so important. Self-care, it's so important. Date night or date whatever, even if it's like an hour or even half a night in the caca, mm. or whatever. Mm. But just have that alone time to reconnect, to ground yourself when you connect with yourself. And I think it makes you a better parent yeah. when you know who you are and what you want. Yeah. I think I went through that. Um, sorry, my girl, I was just going to say, I went through that whole um, thing of I'm a bad parent. Mm. I don't, I can't, like, I constantly... Tell me, my husband. I tell him, you know, we need one mother yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that I told my nanny from Champ, mm. like one of the things that I usually tell her: please do not call me unless it's an emergency. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Because the minute you will call me, I will assume yeah. there's something there's burning. Something very yeah. wrong. There's something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Because I work from yeah. home. So when mm. I leave the house mm. and you're calling me, yeah. I just know mm. a pana. Mm. I told her yeah. there's another parent mm. in the house. Mm. But yeah. that's the reason why you're calling me. And I've told you literally, literally yeah. But you've called me six times. It you have to think through how to remove those things. Mm. And and I wanted to also veer it towards society's expectations, mm. gendered expectations, where you are the mother of this mm. child. Everything that child mm. depends on you until mm. six months. Mm. Six weeks, mm. six months. Mm. Six years. Six years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I engage with you. Six months and it's fast. Yeah. It's fast. Yeah. It's fast. It's fast. It's fast. It's fast. It's fast. It's fast. So if you've not had mothered yourself, if you've not had a long time, yeah. if you've not figured out yeah. how to mm. maneuver mm. leaving your child to mm. go and catch strokes, exactly. Siju mm. Taishi right. by Shagani for yeah. the next seven years if you're mm. still in postpartum. Mm. So that's all I wanted to say. So answer that. I think that's actually a really important point mm. to, to recognize that yes, your child depends on you and relies lies on you and just yesterday i said to my doctor who i work with no mother no baby mm. and he actually paused and looked at me and he said oh my god you're right i said yeah we always put baby first but there is no baby without a mother mm. we, without like you cannot be a good mom to your baby if you're not good to yourself mm. right what i was gonna say to the previous question about how do we make the connection back mm. to yourself mm. i think first of all the disconnect I would say first perspective. The disconnect is not a negative thing Mm. so much as it is a necessary thing, Mm. right? Everything in life, everything that has life in it grows. Even this conversation, Mm. where we are now is not where we started an hour Mm. ago. An Mm. hour ago, some Mm. of us were late Mm. and apologetic. (laughs) An hour later, we are chilling and talking and Mm. having tea, right? And creating greater intimacy. Mm. 
the process of bringing life into the world, even for animals. It requires like a like a slowing down, a hibernation, yeah. a coming kind of, you know, covering and caring and whatever. And therefore sex sometimes is deprioritized yeah. because this takes, you know, in that moment, in that season, takes priority. So look at it as a normal part of mothering mm -hmm. right that it's normal it's normal for me to feel disconnected because i have been yeah. rightfully so very focused on yeah. this other child yeah right okay and then mm -hmm. everything that has life in it grows correct mm -hmm. you are a thing that has life mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. if we if we all buried our phones in the sand after 20 years they'll be the same size mm -hmm. same length mm -hmm. same width mm -hmm. same everything mm -hmm. because they don't have life mm -hmm. yeah we are the ones who put life in the devices mm -hmm. You yourself, you may say, I'm still the same person. Yeah. You're not. But you've gone, a you've gone through a change. There's been season. a huge change. Yeah. Your hormones also, as soon as the baby, so as soon as you conceive, your, be your body begins to produce mm. what's needed yeah. from your thyroid producing the that right level of hormones mm. to ETC, ETC, folic acid you're taking. Mm. The minute that baby is out of you, a bunch of hormones are still in you that now have kind of, Chunafanya. Mm. They're just free, free for them. Yes. Yeah. And they don't happen suddenly. Mm. They don't get into your body suddenly and they don't they leave your body suddenly. suddenly. So maybe release the expectation for your sexuality to be suddenly, mm. right? Yeah. That seasons, love because that. seasons come and go mm. and seasons are mm. gradual. Mm. When we get the first rain, is when we're like, Allah, I think we're in April. Mm. Yeah. But it doesn't just come all of a sudden unless it's El Nino, mm. right? Yeah. It doesn't just come like, yeah. which is unhealthy. Mm. So your sexuality will come back gradually and over time because you yeah. are a living thing. You have had to expand as a human being to care for another human, yeah. to care for yourself. Mm. So that's one thought I wanted to say. It's a season. It's an appropriate mm. season. And mm. getting... You're not even trying to get back to where you are. That's mm, the other thing exactly. I want to say. Trying to go back to where you are, you're dead in the water already. Mm, what that yeah. means is that you're setting yourself up for failure. Mm, yeah. It isn't possible. What you're doing is growing into the new self. Mm. Because the old self, where you were, yeah. you didn't have a baby. You could swing mm. from chandeliers all day yeah. if you wanted. Yeah. You could shag on the couch if you wanted. Mm. Now your mom-in-law is there, your house help is there, the baby mm. is you know, on you all the mm. time. So try to understand that you're not going back. The only to going back is, it's too late. So, yeah, you already yeah. have a baby now. Mm -hmm. It's about normal. who am I now? And that's exactly. the question. What exactly. is my new normal? Yeah. And finally, mm -hmm. sex is play. I know we talk about sex, about the, the in and the out. Mm -hmm. First of all, it doesn't have to be in and out. Mm -hmm. You see, this it is can like, just be. <laughs> no, no, they're not it, teaching. Yeah. Right now, like, <laughs> Because maybe you have stitches, Bana. If he's pounding, pounding you, he's, he's, he's working against the agenda. He can get the rules. You the head of the rules. What's that? Oh, girl. Is it, wait, no, is it she's, she's talking about a partner. She's talking about a partner. Oh, you do I know about the role. Yeah. And the partner can oh, help you. Yeah. 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 But you have stitches. And you are, no, and you the stitches cleaning. won't be. It's yeah. on the clit. Because it focuses on your clit. Uh, right. uh, okay. But okay. remember, mm. because of orgasm, this, this episode was funded oh, by blah blah blah. The rose, please, can the rose find this episode so that you can <laughs> and send samples? Send like, samples for the guests. Work <laughs> with for the guests. <laughs> I know, but like all I'm saying is, who can I be now? And now, what I was gonna say mm. is, sex is play. And how much do you wanna play? If I came on you right now and put my hands in your beautiful hair, mm. it was like bugging you. No, no permission, no context. Yeah. You invited a guest to talk about sex as a mm. professional, and here she is all up in your business. Mm. Right. That's exactly it, yeah. what you just did. Mm. Right? You just feel like what? So you're not even with your partner, you're not just hi Abasi. Sasa or one beer wind and to find you. No, like like Stephen playing, you're not Yeah. Oh. I mean, are you call? <coughs> and then they will call tuning. Uh, yes, you can be tuning. Tune and be tuned. Come sir. The other thing that you can do, small things that you can do for yourself, because remember, before you even think of a partner, mm. you yourself must be mm. present. Mm. The sex might be about playing together. Mm. Intimacy. Sex mm. isn't just mm. this. Sensuality. Mm. The mm. sex might be about you napping because you're exhausted, but yeah. you're napping on their chest, mm. right? 
The, the sex might be, by the way, highly recommend, especially because birth is such a traumatic event, well, even the most beautiful one. Your body is just mm. going through like hell. Mm. Upgrade things like your body wash. Mm. Upgrade things like mm. your lotion. Mm. Get that lippy that you know is 4Gs and mm. you know 4Gs is crazy for a lippy. Mm. But that Kamani, your aunties mm. like press mm. press in I your like, hands. I like how, yeah, yeah. Yes. episode Fenty mm. Beauty, we also want you to come and sponsor this event. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Right. This but like yeah. small things, because none of you, for example, know what lotion I have on. Mm. But the lotion yes. I have on today mm. Mm. Actually, my mom got it for me. And there's a way she does her lotion where she puts mm. perfume. Mm. She put her like perfume she has. Mm. So wearing feel so sexual. I brought my own mom to, to oh. up here yeah. to talk about mothering. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. None of you would have known that. Mm. But I know it. Mm. I know why I wore this. Mm. I know why I wore this. I know why I wore mm. this dress. In fact, I can't wait mm. to take pictures so I can <laughs> so I can complete the look. It's so, so and it's being sexual with yourself. Yeah. It's deciding. You, yeah. you guys didn't see this, but Nemo saw me just before we came on. I said, oh, I need to spray something. If I don't mm. have a good scent, I don't feel... Mm. Yeah. I feel chikoleko. Yeah. I need like... Mm. Some none of you really yeah. know or care yeah. whether I put a scent on. But it's but about how you... Yeah. just a, a body <coughs> splash mm. for me. Yeah. Now, if I was to go to my partner... I am ripe for tuning. Mm, for tuning. Now when he tunes, the strokes, the strokes are that. landing. I love that. But of course or I can her. tune you. Or her. Yes, I can indeed. tune them all. Correct. But Because I'm already in the state, in the of, state the of, of what of can mind. I be. The day Correct. that I read somewhere that self, even oiling yourself from mm. bottom to top it's looks so like self-care yeah. and self it time is. for and yourself. sensual. Yeah. It so is. I do that too. These days, when I go like bathroom time mm. is my time. Yes. I go shower, mm. close myself, yeah. and I oil myself from top to bottom. Yeah. Whatever else I want to put yeah. on my body, I will mm. do that time for ten minutes. Yeah. Just yes. do that. Yeah. For that, and it looks like and it and it feels like almost it's not grounding you. Like not even grounding. Like it like, feels like rest. Like yeah. you're home yeah. to yourself. Like it's like your now time. It's you. Yeah. No one is asking you. No one Anything. is knocking on the door. Yes. Throwing things over here under the t- I need you're to lucky poop. You have a yeah. foyer I need <laughs> that doesn't come to the door when you're in the bathroom. There's a word we've used now. Oh. I need privacy. Oh, oh. <laughs> so, 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 so you so teach yeah. them. Yeah. 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 The, the, the mom said to the boy, I need privacy. So he wrote privacy yeah. and then and gave, gave her. Yeah, and then he continued standing there. <laughs> but, <laughs> I love you so take much. Take your privacy. Yes, privacy. Just like, yeah. okay, but but we, we try, we try at least, because when we, when she goes to the bathroom, we close the door and tell her, that's your privacy. Yeah, that's your privacy. You know? So at least so when you want to get dressed, so. I want privacy. Yes. When you want to. Yeah. So at least yeah. it's very, very important. But the thing that I was thinking about while you were talking, is how privileged we are. Oh, yeah. speak on it. Yeah. How privileged. And I can't not have that conversation yeah. about yes. privilege mm. because other people have, when watching and mothering the mm. woman episodes, they're like, you know, you don't talk about the woman who's, who lives in the rural areas, yes. the, the person who lives mm. in, in, you know, informal settlements because that sex postpartum yeah. For them, it doesn't look yeah. like what shells look, look like. like it's not six weeks. Yeah. Yes. You don't have yeah. help. Your yeah. mother-in-law won't come to to help you. She'll come to help with the baby. Mm-hmm. So while she's holding the baby, she's expecting you to go and work and yeah. do other things. Yeah. So I feel like we need to address that. Yes. And how can we address that? Yeah. You know? I'm a big believer in starting where you are with what you have. Yeah. Right? Whether the person is the wealthiest or middle class or not, like mm. on the on the they're on the lower end of the socioeconomic scale, when they want to rest, they're more or less doing the same thing mm. in a different environment. All of them are probably going to sit down and not either watch TV or not watch anything or read mm. a newspaper or listen to the radio. But there's a sense of I'm sitting and I'm doing something different from usual. What does that mean? It means that for us talking about upgrading our body wash and our mm. body splash and body lotion, it's because that's where we are. There are women that will go to Dubai for the 40 days. Yes? Yeah. We can't go, but we can do the 400 bob lotion, mm. right? Rather than the 200 bob one. Down there, maybe you really, things like milk are a luxury. So when you can, if you can, it's about doing the extra thing for yourself. Mm. It might mean spending that 50 bob or 60 bob to buy milk. Mm. 
kama unataka sukari na hauna ukunywe tu maziwa useme i have the I milk have, i don't yeah. have the sugar it might mean having milky tea once that week mm. because your neighbor kind of felt amina had a baby ni mo had a baby let me give her some milk ya mtoto you know what mm. i mean so it's not the thing itself personally it's i'd love act. to re, you know like relax in paris mm. but you know it's the act of rest yes and rest is political and you it's know that? looking it is yeah. it is this actually entire group set up about resting is a ministry mm. i think they call themselves the nap ministry yeah. so it, when i say the whole point i'm trying to make is we are privileged and so we are speaking from our lens mm. and yet we are less privileged than others and also more privileged than others yeah. and even those in the lower end of the socio economic scale are less privileged in some ways and more privileged in others for example mm. you may find they have better community you may find that the person who had the baby gets more women popping in to do her dishes or more men carrying her 20 gallons of water yeah. or the butcher next door saying peleke these bones to mama nani yeah. so she can have soup whereas us the privileged don't have yeah. do you know what i mean you're in your own little yes cubans. so lean into whatever privilege you have mm. that's the point lean into whatever pleasure you can get one of the my favorite things i tell my clients is pleasure for pleasure's sake mm-hmm. pleasure for pleasure's sake not milk so i can produce breast yeah. milk not uji so i can not njahen no mm-hmm. sometimes it's about just having tea with two spoons of sugar instead of one because in that moment it makes you like a child happy mm-hmm. right so for those women i want them i want to encourage them to know don't put your eyes up on what you don't have put your eyes out to what you do have mm. and try to see how much of that you can access yeah because some Agreed. of what you have some of their veggies cost less than what we buy mm. they have access to fresher meat some of them mm. because kichinji on ya for kwao yeah right they buy it at a lower rate they have a greater sense of community this is how people on the lower end of the scale manage mm. to live and educate don't you ever wonder about yeah. that yeah. how how did my mom raise us on a teacher salary because ten of be, us. yeah ten of them would come <laughs> together know. and you have t- you know one mom 10 kids go play in that house yeah. so the nine moms can work and then on sunday we will take this one and that mother mm. boss work is nzuri anafanya kazi sunday mm. so whatever privileges you have at whatever class you have them yeah yeah not force them what's already there yeah what's already there yeah the sex question is harder because we know the less education the less socio economically strong you are the fewer opportunities for for self actualization yeah. but i know that the the there are ton of conversations happening right now yeah. in terms of sexual reproductive health and i know i appreciate some of them like basically teach people how to you know have bigger gaps mm. in your uh, in your mm. you know and you have to have that conversation with both them the Man, the woman the and the woman yeah. yeah just explaining to them you know having a gap of 2 or 3 years mm-hmm. saves you more money mm-hmm. you know having 2 three, three kids instead of 8 will save you more money in the long run and yeah. and having those conversations but then now as we close because we've had an interesting conversation mm-hmm. and we can continue talking about this until forever, forever. <laughs> but <coughs> the in closing i i just want to hear especially from you Nimo, like did culture or gendered expectations ever cloud your your <laughs> sexual experience before or after I, kids I, i don't I, like i said i was lucky enough to be raised by very liberal parents mm. um who had conversations with me about sex mm-hmm. who had you know so so for me it it's been very much my call does that make sense yeah it does it's been very much my call and and culture culture i don't think has ever featured in our family because like i say my parents separated up in 78 um, my dad was a single father mm. at that time he was our primary care so we have we've never really done cultural or do you know i mean when my daughter was born there the, the her father's family wanted her to cut her hair mm. i said is there a reason mm. will she die if we don't know mm. then we're keeping it mm. so i've never been one for um tradition for religion mm. <laughs> none, none of those things yeah. um 
And and I wish every woman that that they could come from a space of being able, mm. however small, whoever we are in society, mm. but being able to 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 take life by the horns and live life how they want to mm. with the support of whether it's a family, friends, mm. partner. That's beautiful. But really, yeah. Yeah, I'll stop there because I might mess up and I might <laughs> no. lose the that's the, the plot. That's beautiful <laughs> that's because <laughs> yeah, because honestly, that's that's literally some of the things that we were going to discuss anyway. Like it's sexuality in in African societies. I'm going to say African societies mm. because we are African. Mm. Is so taboo to talk about. Mm. The topic is so multifaceted. Mm. It's so complex. Mm. But I feel like we're the ones who make it complex because, and I will keep talking about generational trauma because we are all in therapy because of that. Millennials, millennials, this conversation we're having about Gen Z and how we love Gen Zs because they're so open. And uh, it's because us guys are we're like this. We're in between, you know, the 70s, pure, happy babies. And then the 80s who are our parents literally were like, we're not going to be like those hippies. AIDS happened because of them. This happened because of them. So we are gonna, our children are gonna be mm-hmm. as as It'll rigid as we are and grounded. Puritan. What is it, Puritan? What's yes, Puritanical. Puritanical. Mm. Those ones. Yeah. So we are trying to struggle and get out of those. So our children are more yeah. wild and mm. free and spirited. Mm. So we've gone back to the seventies. Yeah. Mm. Literally, yeah. it's a cycle. Yeah. So I want us to have this more of these conversation mm. conversations, especially postpartum. Sexuality, intimacy, mm. sensuality. The last thing mm. from you. Mm-hmm. What would you say to a woman who has just has come to your office and said, Doc, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> Nina struggle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What would you say? Because all of us are here and all of us are listening. Mm. So speak to that woman. They do come. And the first thing I do is some of what I've done here today is to really break it down for them to see just how much that they mm-hmm. as human beings have been through, even to the point of delivery. Mm-hmm. Even having a safe delivery is not a guarantee, mm-hmm. right? So it's about validating where they are. It's about understanding how you didn't get nine months pregnant in one day. Mm-hmm. And so at least allow yourself twice as long, yeah. right? It's about figuring out where they're stuck. Mm-hmm. I've had women say, I just, I mean, my baby is the most perfect thing to ever come into my life. Mm. And sex now feels dirty Mm. because the place they came from is sacred. And now I'm about to use it to feel good. Mm. And it's about then some some supportive psychoeducation Mm. about your your multi your multifaceted being yeah you didn't it didn't become sacred because the baby came it was always a sacred space Mm. used for multiple things Mm. also yes in the case of a baby it's an exit and then in the case of sex it's an entrance and an exit Mm. and that that is exactly how you were designed it's not a flaw in your design if you came out of pregnancy and safe delivery and you didn't feel a shift inside you, that is what I would be concerned about. Yeah. That's what would worry mm. me because it would suggest to me you, you're disconnected even from your reality and that's a person in a dangerous place. Yeah. The, I think the chances for postpartum psychosis it's in high. terms of actually like killing the child, killing yourself. So the fact that you're struggling means also you're not a sociopath mm-hmm. and you're not a psychopath. Mm-hmm. And isn't that great? I know, right? That you're just a human woman having a human experience. Reactions yes. to things yes. and feelings. And yes. your feelings. And your feelings. And your feelings. Your feelings are alive and well. Yeah. And then there's a framework I share with my clients now. You know that Mercedes-Benz um, logo? Mm. It's like a, mm. it's a like pie a divided yeah. like into yeah. three yeah. parts. Yeah. Eh? It's like that. One third of that is capital S for self, Mm -hmm. the higher self, the soul. And the next bit is other. Mm -hmm. And the last bit is context. Mm -hmm. When we are out of balance, it's because we have put something in there in the wrong position. So it's just about turning the dial. It's not about saying you're wrong, you're a terrible Mm -hmm. mom, how could Mm -hmm. you? And actually the order, Mm -hmm. so this is Virginia Satira's work and Mm -hmm. this is not how she (coughs) conceptualized it, but it's how I do. The order is always self and then other and then context. context. And the, that will change 
in this context we're having this conversation mm. so in myself mm. i can think about do i want to wear a lippy mm. do i feel good about spritzing mm. something mm. you had your own experiences mm. but in myself at home i could also do the same thing for a different reason mm. right so as a mom because there's a lot of voices a lot of shoulds a lot of god i could do a whole conversation about mm. that begin with yourself what where am i right now i'm feeling so Please fed yourself. up with people yeah Okay, this is my mother-in-law. I don't want to cuss her out. This is my father-in-law. I love them, but I just can't take it anymore. Mm-hmm. How can I take care of myself in this moment? Maybe just go to the That's bathroom beautiful. and pee. I yeah. literally reco- I tell yeah. my clients go to the bathroom and pee and, and then sit. wash your hands. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and just have them it's it's this That's change really even of sensation yeah. in your body, yeah. right? So that you're physically and psychologically releasing something. Mm-hmm. And then you clean up and then you wash your hands and you have like a sense of cleansing. Yes. Then you can face them. Or you know what they're here for 2 hours and then after that I'm going to have a bar of chocolate. Mm. So that you have inbuilt ways to care to for care. yourself, right? Mm. And then the other is who? Is it the child? Is it the in-law? Is it the husband or the wife or the house help? And how do I want to handle that? Yeah. Right? And that self in the first position. Yeah. If you put self in the second position, yeah. You come to my office. Mm. I'm just telling you. <laughs> You've not unmothered yourself. <laughs> yes. It's learning and it's not self, it's not small self yeah. like me me me. I'm just mm. taking care of it's myself. It's not that big one. It's your soul. Yeah. What's freaking out about me yeah. right now? Yeah. If one more person tells me what to do with my kid, I'm mm. going to lose my mm. mind. Okay. I know they mean well, but yes. Mm. That's so two things awesome. can coexist. Yeah. But they do mean well, but it's driving me crazy. Yeah. Yeah. How can I care for myself in this moment? Mm. Not tomorrow in two weeks when they're no, six or seven no. and we are officially postpartum. Yeah. In this Spitting moment, up facts. right? <laughs> no. And you know, in that moment, like I used to keep candy in my office mm. when I worked in a physical office because some sessions were heavy mm. and I couldn't just run to Java for a coffee mm. or to wherever. So my eclairs were saved for when I was feeling like a, I'm Such shredded. Yeah. And then my hard eclair type candy, my mm. caramels, mm. were just for saying, okay. you okay. did well. Yeah. Like, you, oh, you got And then at the end, I could get now a hot dower yeah, and yeah, go yeah. home and feel <laughs> grounded. Right. Yeah. right. So yeah. self yeah. and then other. And because then when you can identify what is the other, yeah. you might say, people are driving me crazy. Mm. And actually, it's just your house help asking you for sugar six yeah. times. Mm. Then you're able to say, look, when I'm away, I'm working. Mm. And when you call me, it a lot it sends my mind yes. into, into overdrive. Into panic. Yeah. Kama kuna skari, kaini bila skari. Mm. Kama kuna skari, enda kwa duka ya mama. Boni, it's the nitalipa nikikuja. Yeah. Pigia baba mtoto. Mm. Kama you know what I mean like yeah. by the time you call me, you better have called the president first. Yeah. Like I'm last. <laughs> my friends are <laughs> much. My friends was that yeah. all the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So the self, president. other, and context. Mm. And when you're out of balance, don't judge yourself. Yeah. Just yeah. ask, where also, has my dial turned, mm. and who and have I put on I top? Oh, my mother-in-law is yeah. coming, and the house yeah. is dirty. Yeah. Just knowing that is mm. enough to say, oh, that's what's bugging you. Yeah. Okay. What can I you love do? That. I completely yeah. love that, and I think I I also do the same, but not that because you know therapy. Um, <laughs> that's therapy. <laughs> um, I ask myself in, when I'm in a terrible situation, mm. what don't I like about this? Yeah. And I try and remove myself from that. And that's 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 the way yes. I do it. So I'm like, yeah. what yeah. when I get agitated and I'm stressed yeah. and I'm whatever, yeah. I'm like, what don't I like about the situation? Mm. And it can be as bad as I don't like this person, and I'll remove myself right. from, from that presence. person. Right. Yeah, and I feel better. Yeah. So and if yeah. you can't, you control what you can yeah. do. Exactly. Yeah. Like I was late. Yeah. I fully admit. And honestly, the Uber driver. I even said to him, "I hope your next client is is <laughs> is quiet, <laughs> and then doesn't stress yeah. you." Yeah. Because I talked that man's ear off. About how you to get yeah. I'm sure he's yeah. ready to go home, right? And I kept saying, it's so unprofessional. It's so unprofessional that I'm late. I can't believe I'm late. But right? what was the first thing we both told you? Mm. Really to ground yourself. Yes. Because the conversation is mm. about us. Mm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and unfortunately, yeah. that is brings us to the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been great. It's been brilliant. brilliant. It's been awesome. I've loved having the both of you here. I, I hope you yeah. will be able to stay. <laughs> um, at least we can have the next conversation or whatever that looks like but just for this episode mm-hmm. i absolutely had 
a brilliant time. I hope so, you guys did oh, too. Absolutely. Um, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And, and, we'll yeah. I, and right. when we have our next episodes, yeah. Tafadalini, please, mm. we still need <laughs> expert voices. We still <laughs> need but what did you call yourself? A psychotherapist? Expert voice at a minute. A psychiatric nurse. A psychiatric nurse. A psychotherapist. A psychotherapist. A psychotherapist. A yoga teacher. And yoga. Teacher. And mother. And mom lover. And you know. Love lover. Love lover. I love that. Tune that. Tune that. Tune that. So many things. I love Nemo. So thank you so much. And I love how she said, and I want this for other women. Because I was like, girl, I want this for me too. Like, Thanks, guys.